Greetings and salutations all you folks out here. This is going to be my very first attempt at an actual cast of Heroes of the Storm. Unfortunately, I have a bit of an allergy problem, so at this exact second, my voice is a tiny, it's a tiny bit rough, excuse me, but I will do my absolute level best to get through this, and hopefully it will be an enjoyable experience all the way around. I gotta say that Heart of the, or not Heart, Derp. Heroes of the Storm is in beta, which means that the replay function is not quite completely finished yet. So there is going to be a little bit of a um, some hitching along the way, and the controls are a little bit clumsy, but we will get there, folks. We will get there. So today I'm playing as Gazlo. And this guy is extremely difficult to control. A lot of people do not like to play as him. I have rarely seen him used in games, but I absolutely freaking love this player because I am a troll at heart, and this hero is an innate, ready-made troll. He is designed for area control, not for full frontal assaults until much later in the game. For, I would say, the first seven or eight... Well, let's say to level 10, until he picks up his heroic ability. Um, he is extremely underpowered. I would stay away from everything except for minions and towers until you pass level 10. Um, the But after level 10, he starts picking up some of his better abilities. And he gets incredibly strong late game, as you are going to see. So the only disadvantage that I see in him is that you either have to have a really, really good team that supports you so that you don't contribute much to experience at the beginning of the game when you pick up the slack at the end, or you have to spend all day grinding in lanes to do what you're good at because um, this guy can generate a ton of experience points with his turrets and other abilities, killing off minions and towers fairly easily. So just running through his abilities real quick, his Q is to lay down those handy dandy turrets that you're seeing pop up all over the map. Those do 30 DPS and last for 30 seconds. So it's a extremely handy area of denial tool. And then the W is a charging blast, which you'll see in just a little while. And then the E is the bomb that you've seen go off a couple of times already. I'll call it out when I see it next. It is a 2.5 second timed explosion that does a pretty decent amount of damage after it blows up. And uh, that is another thing. It's just got a huge area of effect that you can use for crowd control. So on this map, this is the Dragon Shire. The objective is to control this temple on the northern side and this temple on the southern side. When you control both of these, this dragon statue will basically come to life if you choose to let it out. You can go... Uh, capture the statue and you will come to life as the Dragon Knight. You can see right here my team, the Reds, we were able to capture it and that is going to mean that I'm gonna head north and try to snag the thing before one of the temples goes down but the southern one already did. I'm gonna run into Stitch here and have to deploy a couple of turrets and try to whittle his health down. Stitch's is ridiculously beefy. The guy starts regenning health, he does a very good amount of damage, he has abilities that make him much more survivable and can hook you, pull you in. He's an incredibly good melee character and kind of annoying to deal with. But, he is going to get chased off because I have the backup of a support player here. And we're going to get ready and just dispatch these minions. And we're running almost exactly head to head as far as experience points go, team to team. You can see up here, I've already generated a lot of siege damage, but uh, I'm not the highest experience point contributor. And yeah, that is the scoreboard as it's sitting this exact moment. Up here, we're going to get a kill in on Sonya, yes! Combination of some brute force damage from three people and then a ranged attack from Anubis is going to take care of that player. We're going to secure the northern and southern side heading down here where we have control of the statue. I'm going to have to see if we can snag it. And no, Stitches is lying in wait. I should not have tried for that. Run away, run away. 
and Stitches is going to pull me back. That is the annoying thing about Stitches. He's kind of hard to get away from if he really wants you to stick around. He's all but like, but I want to give you a hug. I know it's kind of nasty with my intestines hanging out, but you know, everybody needs a little love. He is going to get killed off right there, though. And now the other team is in control. Well, that's annoying. So I am going to just hang out here and try to pull some area denial because if you don't let the other team claim the prize they might as well have not won the prize you gotta deal with a annoying nova hologram here gonna lay down some turrets and again this guy gazlo excels at area denial so that's what you got to use him for you got to play to your strengths in a big kind of way and i don't know why i'm stuck on malfurion's picture that is very odd there we go I'm back on my view. Going to have a player take a dive there. Anubis just barely surviving that two versus one and then getting a good amount of regen back online. I came back in and did a little bit there, but not too awfully much. I was kind of a passive observer on that fight. Right now we're sitting on... Uh, Red has one of these. Actually, they're blue looking at the teams, but my team was on the right, and it's habitual to refer to them as blue. Um, we've got control of the Southern Shrine, and the enemy team has control of the Northern Shrine, where right at this exact moment, they're having a little game of Ring Around the Rosy here, trying not to let each other claim it and Malfurion's gonna deal a little bit of damage but retreat which is not the best idea ever because this is still kind of locked in eternal circular motion gotta do something about that for sure for sure all right up here in the center where I'm at still pulling area denial this guy is definitely, he's classified as a melee specialist, but honestly, and it's almost like he's a kind of gimpy support class until level 13 or so, whenever you get that other upgrade. Um, and then after that, he does pretty well. Right now, let's see what I've got. I've got Demolitionist, which is add 10% damage to structures and steal one ammo as you attack it, which makes you extremely effective versus towers it makes you incredibly um you're very hard to kill your en your enemy towers can't really do a whole lot to defend against you plus i got the 50 percent damage reduction from anything that is not a hero so they can't kill me as quickly either and then picked up multiple targets on the turrets instead of a single tar single target attack they have a three target attack first one does all the damage and then two additional targets are picked for 50 percent damage apiece so it essentially doubles the dps of your turret and you can see my chainsaw is cranking up that is a 150 percent damage boost to anything that is not a hero and that is a passive heroic ability you pass up on the r ability with this uh upgrade and basically you just get a huge, huge damage buff that is not to be underestimated. It makes it where this guy alone can take on an entire group of defensive structures without much problem at all because as he's attacking, he robs them of ammunition, which means their attacking cycle lasts roughly half as long versus him. Then he has a 50% damage reduction, so you're looking at he only takes 25% of the damage that was intended from that tower and then on top of that he's killing the tower 2.5 times faster than any of the other heroes could so that just makes him brutal for castle destruction i love it once you start getting the tech levels up you can see how quickly he is dropping the health on that granted there are three attacking this one but you'll see in just a little while how much he can do as a single character Gonna keep mowing down these minions. That also gives the 150 damage boost. I believe it's two hits to a minion. There you go. That is just me. That's all my damage right there. That is absolutely horrendous amounts of damage. And a plus side to this too is that you can basically provide your own minions. Towers prioritize minions in their firing cycles. And uh, if you place, if you continually place turrets 
the defenses will target those instead of your main hero. So that means that you can evade even more damage from those structures. There we go. I picked up an upgrade that gives damage to nearby enemy. 10 damage per second to nearby enemies, which does ramp up with your veterancy level. So that is a pretty cool ability. Again, this guy excels in area denial and dealing with large groups of enemies as long as he has time to prepare first. You got to lay your traps, and uh, that is pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm camping on the middle and trusting my teammates to pick up the shrines on either side because I can keep this locked down. Got my three turrets down. Basically dancing a little jig in here. Almost got it, but it was not meant to be. Unfortunately, up here on this side, this one went down. So I'm just going to keep camping here. Here comes Sonya, and Anubis is here to help me. And that's going to be a very, very quick kill. Two on one with my defenses in place. Sonya stood no chance whatsoever. Not sure why that was even attempted. Um, let's see, up to 6-0. and oh. And capping off the experience charts right there. But this is the number I'm interested in. 51k damage to structures. That is the siege power of Gazlo. So at this exact second, I had not yet had my, um, my thought press process completed. I'm guarding the center while trusting my teammates to capture the ends. Where in reality, I should be, I, I'm kind of doing this backwards. But, right here, picking up another denial, got three turrets focus fired on Sonya. Gonna pick up that bomb for the stun, and that's gonna let me gain another kill. So, you can see that this character is gaining strength and a lot of it. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with all these minions that are incoming. And that is that. Excuse me. I'm trying to hit the button when I can. These allergies are giving me a serious case of the sniffles. Hopefully I am not interrupting the microphone too much for you guys. I guarantee you it's more pleasant to listen to silence than it is to listen to me do that. So what happened here was, it was two versus two, and I managed to drop a turret before I died. This turret assisted <laughs> my teammate in killing both of those other players. So I believe, if I'm not totally mistaken, yeah, both of those count. No, those did not count because I was dead at the time. But uh, up to eight and one, both of those were assists for me. Those turrets helped kill. Gazlo can set wicked traps, which you do not necessarily have to be alive to take advantage of. All right, you can see my uh, move orders pinging right there, but I decided to head off somewhere else. I'm gonna head up to the north side. This is, I think, where I had my epiphany. So, yes, let me lock the north temple. I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, well, why am I trying to lock an area that is not of any use until both the shrines are collected? I will sit and camp the one of the shrines and that will let my entire team, all four other players, go to the southern side and grab the other shrine and then try to make it to the Dragon Knight, which I think will work a little bit better. And so, laying down my four turrets up here, I'm just going to camp out. I believe I have another upgrade. Yes, increase the max amount of turrets. That's going to allow me to lay four at a time, hold four to a charge. So now I can maintain four at a constant rate instead of maintaining two to three and then in short blips getting that additional turret up there. I'm gonna head south because basically the entire other team was dead there for a second. But these two were doing a pretty good job of denial. Gonna try to drag the grab the knight, get denied by an attack, try to grab again, get denied again by Stitches. Stitches bound and determined not to let me get that knight. And I stuck around on the pad a little bit too long, chained back in by Stitches, and that is the end of that. Stitches is going to take a little fire from these turrets, but it is no big deal 
He's gonna get back, wade through some minions, pick up some health, and he is out of there. That's a really cool ability right there. I'm not the hugest fan of the character, but that the spinning arrow, I don't know what that's called, whirlwind or whatever, um, that is a pretty cool attack, and it's extremely good at clearing out a room. Uh, if there's tons and tons of targets around to be had, then that is definitely a very useful ability. Also, you can move while you're using it, and it's pretty long-ranged, so you'll be able to knock out characters that way. Alright, I am still dead. Dead, dead, dead. Respawning now. And away we go. Hello, buddy. Cannot lock the camera to him. As this goes on, I will learn the controls a little bit better. But for the most part, right now, this is beta, as you guys know. So the camera controls, the replay controls are in kind of rough shape. They're very usable, not entirely intuitive. And there are a couple of bugs here and there that are fairly noticeable. But all, all in all, this is a really good beta. It feels like a finished game. Playing it is a really good time. Got stitches really, really messing up. <laughs> At Nova there. That is an interesting move. Swallowing someone up into your abdominal cavity. It's almost like Stitches knocks himself up with the character that he is trying to kill. No, I'm going to pull the stealth move, run right past him without him even realizing that she was there. And I'm going to go south. So what's happening here is I'm about to pick up my 20th upgrade, the 20th level rather, which is going to unlock my other, um, my other ability, the upgrade for the heroic, which is going to give me the 150% damage boost to heroes. But what's happening here? is we've got a push from the left side team in the top right of the map and they've got one set of keeps in between them and the core and I just took out this entire group I am now taking out this entire group someone's finally gonna come in and help me with this and you can see my health bar is about full and mana is not too bad either this at this stage of the game Gazlo is just a single wrecking ball he is a one-man demolition team just shredding the health off of that turret redirecting fire off of myself onto these secondary turrets easily dealing with the minions on this other side we have a push of four players and a wall of minions and I'm over here with one with help from one player and just gonna go to town wrecking this coming in against a full health tower you got four still four down to three now number four ran off somewhere still trying to break through and I'm just shredding <laughs> and there goes the health that is gonna be game right there these guys barely made it in and I'm there. Alright, so the purpose of that was to show how the first part of the game, Gazlo is kind of hard to play. Um, it does not really go that super well for you. Um, but then the second half of the game, he is an absolute powerhouse. And I have yet to have this happen in a game, but I really wish that I could play this with a team of five on voice chat. Because I really believe that if people were to treat Gazlo like a boss and get him teched up, as soon as you hit level 20, all four other players group around him and make a push for the enemy's core... I don't think that there's a whole lot that could stop him because at that point, Gazlo is just so freaking strong with all of his damage buffs and the four turrets that he carries along with him that you can pretty much just sit down and lay waste to anything that comes within your area of effect. 
So that is something that I do want to try, and that's something that I want to reach out to you guys if you want to play with me. I've been playing with one or two guys off of FAF, but nobody so far has offered voice chat. I want to get a team of four other guys together and play this game. Have a little bit of fun with it. You're more than welcome to participate, and uh, we'll be able to do some good things. going to go over the score real quick here, and this is... Again, this is not the best showcase of skill. I still have a ton to learn about this game. But this shows you exactly what Gazla is all about. I by no means had high marks in the hero damage. No healing effects. Not the greatest kill death. I mean, we got 17-3 to my 10-2 and then 12-0 up here. But look at the siege damage. 140k versus 87 for the next highest and far outstripping anything on the southern team and then in addition to that pulling the second highest XP contribution because I was sitting there crunching minions and towers pretty much the whole game so that is what Gazlo is all about he's classified as a melee but honestly he has a lot of the characteristics of a support class right up until you hit like the last four levels on your last upgrade so that is Gazlo. that's that game that is the end of it I would love to hear what you guys think about this and uh, honestly I'm not looking for technical tips on the casting um, there's a couple of things just from doing this this is actually the second time through this cast I did it once and then I redid it um, so I think that I've got a pretty good idea of where I'm gonna go in the next one of these but if any of you have epic games on this that you won or that you lost that had some exhibits of good play, I'd love to get some replays from you guys uh, if you want to be featured in this casting segment. So without further ado, I'm going to get out of here. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern United States time for the live Supreme Commander cast. There's a question and answer time after the cast, and then I'll play a game with you guys, provided my voice holds out, because it is feeling a little rough at the moment. I do not know what tomorrow will bring. Alrighty, till then, thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next cast.